Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at two USB Ethernet devices from Sabrent that deliver greater than gigabit speeds. We have a two and a half gigabit adapter here and a five gigabit adapter. And we're going to take a closer look at both of these in just a second and why I cannot recommend the 5 gigabit at this point. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that these came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how these devices work. Now the price point on these is very reasonable. The 5 gig version costs $59 and the 2.5 gig version is $30. 39 bucks, not all that expensive. Uh, both work with USB-C or regular USB-A. Uh, the 2.5 gig adapter has its cable built in, and they gave you an adapter in the box to go from USB 3 to USB-C. And if you have an extra USB-A port on your PC, I would just use that because you're not going to gain any additional speed out of the USB-C connection here. This is just a Gen 1 device, and that's really all you need for 2.5 gigabits. Uh, the 5 gigabit version here has a detached cable. In fact, it comes with two in the box. You'll get a USB-C to USB-C cable and a USB-C to USB-A cable. So it too will work with either size port. And my big disappointment here with the 5 gig version is that it's only running at Gen 1 speeds, meaning that the USB connection is going to max out at 5 gigabits per second. And that means you're not going to get the full speed out of this device because the USB overhead will prevent you from getting there. And I'll show you that in a minute when we run the speed test on it. So I was a bit disappointed with uh, what they chose to use for a USB interface on this one. Now the build quality on these is super rugged. They're made out of metal, both of them, so I think they'll hold up pretty well on the road. Now to test these real quick, we're going to hook them up to my 10 gig switch here. And connected to this switch is a Mac Mini on the other side of the room uh, that is running at 10 gigabits per second. Now this switch also supports two and a half gigabits and five gigabits, so we can get uh, the full run of speeds tested here and we can see exactly what these adapters are capable of. So we're going to start off with the two and a half gig adapter and see how it does first. All right, so let's fire this test up now. We're running it on my Mac and transmitting to another Mac here. And what you want to look for is the SR bandwidth column. This is a utility called Wi-Fi Perf on the Mac. It is free and it runs the open source iPerf software just in a nice uh, graphical user interface wrapper here. And as you can see, we're getting about 2.3 gigabits per second, which is about what I would expect this device to get. And a little earlier, we looked at a similar Ethernet device from Pluggable running with the same Realtek chipset, and that one also got uh, these speeds. So overall, this is performing as expected. Now this again has a Realtek chip inside, so it's compatible with Mac, Windows, and Linux, and you can likely get that working without any kind of driver installation. I was not able to get this one or the pluggable one to work on Android though, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but let's take a look now at the five gigabit adapter, which is going to be a bit more problematic. All right, so we've got the five gig adapter now connected to my Mac, and if we look on the switch here, you can see that uh, we've got a single green light over the port that it's connected to here, port 1. And that means we have a 5 gigabit connection negotiated between the adapter and the network. Uh, but if we go to my Mac here and go and run that test, you'll see that our bandwidth results are anything but 5 gigabits. Again, keep an eye on this SR bandwidth section here. And you can see that the adapter is performing at a speed lower than what we just had on the two and a half gigabit adapter. So there's definitely something wrong here. And the issue is the driver. Now, when I originally shot this video, the process of installing the Mac driver was quite arduous. However, Sabrent has recently released a single click install package for the driver now, which should make things easier but you still have to bypass security settings to get it installed, which always makes me a bit nervous. Now, a little bit earlier though, we did connect it up to Windows and we were able to get the driver installed on Windows a lot easier. So we did run the test there. Uh, and there you can see we're not getting the full five gigabit network speed I was anticipating. We're doing better than the two and a half gig adapter, as you can see, 
Uh, but I think we're running probably about a gigabit slower than we should be uh, based on the uh, speed of the network here. And this is completely attributable to the fact that we're not running on a Gen 2 USB connection with this device. So it's running over just five gigabit per second USB. And because of the overhead, uh, we're not able to get the full speed that we would get on this adapter if it was on a faster USB connection. Now that PC had USB 3.0 Gen 2 ports on it, which we connected this to. We also attached it up to that PC's Thunderbolt port, and the speed was the same as what you just saw on either port. Additionally, a viewer who was watching me test this during a live stream the other day wrote in and said that he got the same speeds on his device as well. So I think three and a half gigabits on the Windows side is the best you're going to see out of this, uh, just due to the fact that they chose USB 3.0 Gen 1 technology to connect it up to the PC. So it's kind of hindered uh, by its limited USB bandwidth. Uh, so I really can't recommend this one. I think we'll probably see better devices coming out uh, that will give you the Gen 2 speeds that will get us to the full 5 gigabit potential of the network connection. Uh, but I'm comfortable recommending the 2.5 gig adapter here. I think it's nice and rugged. It performs nicely. Again, it's not going to work on Android at the moment, but it does seem to work on the Mac and Windows just fine. And it's also uh, Linux compatible too. And I would imagine given the chipset here, it should be a, pretty much a plug and play uh, exercise on these things. But the 5 gig adapter is something I'm going to recommend you skip for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.